Greetings, my name is Kerry and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to do a bit of a mm, review catch up video type thing, not quite sure how to describe it. Basically I've seen a few other people do this. I read quite a lot of series or I'm in the middle of quite a lot of series of books and so at the end of the year I want to do a video about all the series that I've finished reading during the year and at some point I'm going to do a video about series that I need to get on with, that I need to catch up on, that I'm part way through. But for now I'm just going to do a quick catch up of all the series that I've read prior to the start of 2018. So I've got sort of a base point to go from um, to give you a bit of history, a bit of context of series that I have previously read. Um, I think I've got them all in here. So some of these are duologies, some are trilogies, some are massively long series. And these are all ones that I have finished prior to this year. Some of them, most of them you probably know about, some of them you might not have heard of. So I'll give you just a little brief synopsis if I can remember. Um, that's the point of this video. So we're going to start with the one that's on the shelf. And that is uh, the Winnie the Pooh books. Because um, why not? So I read these a long time ago. And I've got this really lovely edition. I didn't actually have a copy of Winnie the Pooh, but I have recently bought myself a copy. Um, so I'm going to be rereading these soon. I mean, it's it's a series, isn't it? Um, <laughs> so yeah, so I've read both of those. Um, I don't know what order to do these. I'm just going to do them in the order that they are next to me. So um, another series that I read over many years. Well, I read the first couple when I was younger, and then when I was in my 20s I picked up the rest of the series because I think I'd only ever actually read Little Women the first one um, I have now read all of them and yeah these I mean I think most people have heard of these books they're about the March sisters and their Little Women is when they're sort of just going into adulthood so in in the UK we have Little Women and Good Wives as the first two books and I think in America they're all just in Little Women I'm not entirely sure um, and then there's uh, Little Men and Joe's Boys, and I can never remember which which one is the third one and which one's the fourth one. Anyway, so they're all really lovely books, um, just give you warm fuzzy feelings reading them, and I especially loved, as I read them, so I read this first one when I was quite young, and I read the, the rest when I was in my early 20s, and so sort of around a similar age to the age the the young the women are at the end of the series and it was really lovely just to sort of grow up with them in that sense I guess. The next series is um, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy which is a trilogy of five books as Douglas Adams always used to say so this is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, The Restaurant at the End of the Universe, Life the Universe and Everything, So Long and Thanks for All the Fish and Mostly Harmless. I read these oh probably about ten years ago Douglas Adams was such a clever writer, so funny. There's a bit of a debate about, I think there are some other sort of extra books that I haven't read because there were the books but it was also a radio series as well. So I think there were some sort of extras, um, just looking on Goodreads says The Lost Chapters of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And then I think someone else has actually picked up and has written, I, th I don't know whether there was one that was unfinished and then someone else has sort of try to finish it off um, I'm not sure anyway but the the sort of the five that are recognized as the trilogy <laughs> um, I have read all of those and really enjoyed and actually really could do with rereading them soon but yeah Douglas Adams is a brilliant writer if you haven't if you like sci-fi and you haven't read him then seriously you need to go on that okay so the next series is one that you might not have heard of um because I don't really remember how I came across it but I think it's like um probably not quite young adult, probably a bit younger than that. So the series is called Hex by Rhiannon Lasseter. So I picked up the first one when I was in school, probably in a school book sale. Yeah, and then there were two more, which I can't remember the names off of the top of my head. And I lent them to a friend ages ago and she still has them. And you've heard, <laughs> you've heard me talk about lending books to a friend that still has them. It's all the same friend. I have this one friend who has maybe like a dozen of my books and I just really need to get them back from her anyway so these books are about I suppose it's slightly dystopian society uh, it is dystopian society it's a future society where technology has just sort of taken over everything and there's um 
a group of people who develop a gene mutation that lets them telepathically communicate with computers. Yeah, so the trilogy is about how some of these people are discovered by the government and sort of enslaved essentially, and then there are a small group of them that are fighting against that. So, as I say, I got this, this first one when I was still in school, so I think it's about 20 years old now, just double check. Yeah, 1998, this first one was published, so 20 years ago. I'd be interested actually to reread them and see how well they've aged <laughs> if I ever get the the rest of the series back from my friend. But again, if you like sort of middle grade dystopian science fiction, that sort of thing, you might enjoy these ones. Right, let's stick with the science fiction and talk to you about The Serrano Legacy by Elizabeth Moon. This is a seven book series set in space on spaceships, um, somehow includes horses. So the um, I think Elizabeth Moon, the author, loves horse riding and loves science fiction and somehow wanted to manage to combine them, which she actually, surprisingly, it works really well. I only really have vague memories of the story. The, the main character, Hera Serrano, she's been forced to resign and she has to take uh, from the space service um like like starfleet essentially and has to take a job as the captain of the space luxury spaceship of a very rich woman who loves horses and it's about her and how she fits into this new world and then the second part of the series follows a different character who i can't remember i don't remember a lot about the series i do remember really enjoying it though so if you like sci-fi this is a series you might not have heard of that might be worth a try. So next, I have a duology, which I was given as a teenager. Oh no, I think I was a student actually. Um, it's called Dear Bob, the sequel's called Love Jude by Annie Porthouse. These, um, <laughs> I was given I think for a very specific reason. Um, I actually think my parents may have heard the, um, the author speak at a festival, a Christian festival they used to go to called Greenbelt. I think that's where they got them from. Anyway, so the main character Jude is um, a uni, she's just started uni and she's convinced she's gonna meet her husband there. And so these are like Christian novels aimed at Christian students who are going to uni for the first time. Um, and that's why they were given to me. Um, I was given them when, when I started uni and actually, I've started uni convinced I was going to meet my future husband there. Um, so the books are about how Jude navigates sort of trying to find her faith for herself and get involved in church and Christian union and navigate relationships, particularly with guys. Yeah, they actually really helped me at that time because I was in that situation. So, oh, right, what's next? Um, oh, let's stick with the let's stick with the Christian fiction for for the next one. So this is the Left Behind series. These were really big when I was a teenager. And again, I think I was given most of the series by friends and family members. So I read them all when I was, yeah, sort of teen, young adult. So these are a series of novels based on the some people's interpretation of what the end of the world is going to be like from a Christian perspective. So the key um, sort of the trigger point for the novels is the rapture, which I say, I'll just start by saying there are lots of different ways of, in of interpreting what the Bible says about the end of the world essentially and so these are based on these authors represent what a, a not insignificant group of people think might happen and they've turned it into a novel. So the first, the, the event that kicks off these novels is the, the rapture which is the idea that at some point in the future before the world completely goes to crap God will rescue all the Christian people and take them up into heaven and then everyone that's left will have to figure out what to do and then these novels follow a group of people who lose loved ones in the rapture essentially they have friends or family members who are Christians who are taken away in the rapture and that triggers them to find faith for themselves and it's sort of how they navigate the end of the world and what that looks like so as I say, these were really popular when I was a teenager. A lot of people do believe that this is the sort of thing that's going to happen. I don't quite know where I stand on it. It's not something that I've actually researched very much. So yeah, this is some people's interpretation of, particularly of the book of Revelation in the Bible and how that might 
play out for humans but the truth is we don't really know <laughs> so if you're interested in apocalyptic li apocalyptic literature you might like those and I don't yeah I certainly did enjoy them when I was reading them I don't know if I'm going to reread them I'm keeping them for now in case I might but I don't really know right next we'll go for something that is really good and definitely worth reading and that is the Lord of the Rings so um I'm including this as a series I've read the Hobbit and I've read the Lord of the Rings so I'm trying to get comfortable this lore is quite hard I haven't read like the Silmarillion or some of the other the unfinished tales that sort of thing but the essential the main trilogy I have read so I'm including that I think most people know what these books are about if you haven't read the books you might probably have seen the films um I do want to reread these soon because it's been a long time but I might borrow my dad's copies which are individual volumes rather than my hefty really heavy um trilogy edition uh, and to another trilogy which is The Hunger Games. I only recently got my own copies of this because I borrowed them from the library when I first read them. I was quite late to the party, I read them a long time after after the books came out. I actually read them around the time the final films were being made, released. I read them shortly before Mockingjay Part 1 came out in the cinema because I saw, I remember seeing that in the cinema. Um, so I think most people know what these stories are and again they're ones that I want to revisit in the near future but I have so many books that I haven't read before and so many books I want to reread so who knows how soon I'll reread these but I do love them. Um, and sticking with the dystopian, let's go for Divergent. I read these around the time they came out, I think I read them around the time Allegiant came out and yeah because I think I bought the box set of the books because I was trying to get them from the library and there was a really long wait list because Allegiant had just come out and I really enjoyed them at the time. Um, I didn't have any problems with the ending, a lot of my friends did. <laughs> and I did watch, I watched the first film in the cinema but I didn't like all of the changes that they made to it so I haven't seen any of the other films. I don't even know, did they make all the films? I don't remember. Anyway, um, I also read the, um, the novella from Four's perspective which I really enjoyed. I read that a few years because it came out a few years after the end of the trilogy so it was really nice to revisit that. So again I probably will reread re these at some point. I only tend to keep books that I intend to reread at some point. Uh, another trilogy that I read more recently, The Dragon King trilogy by Stephen Lawhead. This is a fantasy trilogy. It was the first series he wrote I believe. Um, so I read some of his other books which are better but these are really enjoyable and um, the first one is called in the hall of dragon in the hall of the dragon king this is the third one the sword and the flame yeah a good fantasy series following a young man who i can't remember quite how he ends up in in the dragon king's court um but he sort of becomes a knight and the series about fighting this evil wizard who has cursed the land and sort of quite general <laughs> fantasy themes really but it's also about finding hope and truth and what's the word valor like knightly good qualities if you like fantasy and you haven't read any Stephen Lawhead these are reasonable they're not amazing but they are good I have another of his series that I haven't read yet um, and I did start a long time ago reading the Pendragon cycle which is probably his best known and I would say probably best written so the first one of those is called Taliesin but I've only ever read the first one of those so I'll probably be having to read that series soon borrow it from my dad because I don't have those ones. Um, the next series that I have to talk about is one that I really really love <laughs> and that is the selection series by Kira Cass. This is the final book in the series The Crown. So there was an initial trilogy and then there was a follow-on duology so it's a series of five books the initial trilogy follows America Singer as she is entered into a competition to find the a bride for the prince. It's set in sort of a dystopian future society where there's quite strict caste system in place and um, it's about the process by which the, the bride is chosen. I think it's based on the idea Kira Cass quite famously said when she wrote the books that she was inspired by the story of Cinderella who ended up marrying a prince when all she wanted was a night off and a pretty dress. So that was sort of her starting point. Yeah, I really love the series and I've read all the novellas as well. The next series was probably the most, the longest and yeah, most intimidating series that I've actually finished and that was 
The Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan, which is so long that he actually died before he could finish it, and so Bradman Sanderson wrote the last three books, which was only meant to be one book, but he left so much stuff that made in three books. So this is the final book in the series, A Memory of Light. This is book 14. So initially there were meant to be 12 books, but yeah, there was so much left. Robert Jordan died after finishing book 11, and there was only meant to be one more book, but there was just so much that... Brandon Sanderson ended up writing three books and I there were points where I didn't think I was going to get to the end of the series specifically didn't think I was going to get to the end of this book there is a battle in this book that lasts for 200 pages 200 pages and I was just like <sighs> so this book on alone took me six months to read because I had to keep putting it down because I was kind of losing interest a little bit but I was like I've put in so much effort I've read 13 books already I need to get to the end of the series so some of the books were really really good and it was really good to get to the end of it. I don't know if I'll reread the series. I have about, I have the last three and I think I have about two or three others from the series. Most of them I borrowed from a friend. So I don't know whether I'll, I haven't made a decision yet whether I'm going to ever attempt to reread them. Um, which is why I'm keeping them for now. But if you love high fantasy, these are... They are very good. Some of them are very good. Particularly the early ones are very good. There's a couple in the middle where it just gets really slow paced. And then the first two that Brandon Sanderson did were very good. This one was just sort of a sigh of relief that it was all finally over. Um, so I've not read any other Brandon Sanderson, so I know I need to get on that. Right, nearly there. The next book or the next series is the Austin Land books by Shannon Hale. This is currently a duology. I don't know if there are any plans to write anymore, so I've included it in this um, series where I know they're continuing. Um, I'll probably include in my end of year wrap ups if I'm up to date with them, or my series I need to catch up on if I if they're still continuing. This one, as far as I'm aware, there's only going to be these two books because I know Shannon Hale is writing other things at the moment, but I would love it if she did write more because these books are brilliant. I really love them. So the um, premise is it's about Jane Austen themed holidays um, and the main character in each is an American woman who's been unlucky in love and goes to Austen land to um, for various reasons. And so their, their companion novels, they don't they don't directly follow one. The main character in this one is different from in Austin Land, but some of the side characters are the same. So they're very enjoyable. If you're a Jane Austen fan, I think you'll enjoy these. Um, so that's Austin Land. And finally is a book series that I've talked about loads because I love them. Um, one of my child favourites, and that's the Narnia series. So I read all of these as a child. I reread them. I reread them every couple of years because they just mean the world to me. If I was summing up books that have I had a real impact on my life, I would definitely include this series. I just get so much from them when I reread them. I know not everyone loves them, but if you are a fan of fantasy books, you have to at least have a, an appreciation for for C.S. Lewis and for J.R.R. Tolkien, both because they were sort of forefathers of the, of the genre. That is all the series I had read prior to the start of 2018. As I mentioned, I will be doing some more videos along these lines of books that series that I need to finish series I might also do one of series that I don't intend to finish because that's quite fun so and yeah at the end of the year I'll do a wrap up of all the series that I've read that I finished in the year or that I've caught up on so thank you so much for watching let me know what you think about any of these books in the comments whether you've read and enjoyed them or disliked them and yeah that's all so I will talk to you again soon bye